Welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. Well, today we're going to talk about five players who I believe are going to break out in a big way for the 49ers this upcoming season. this list, we're going to avoid the very obvious candidate that is Trey Lance. Now, I do believe that Trey Lance will have a breakout season. I think he should be good to very good. He's in a great situation with the 49ers, an awesome coaching staff, good offensive line, weapons at the receiver, tight end, good running back. So I think he's in a great situation, and I think he's going to have a very good year. But for this list, we're going to focus on some other players, maybe guys who aren't as obvious as Trey Lance. So the first guy on my list is going to be linebacker Dre Greenlaw. Now, Dre Greenlaw, I believe, actually has Pro Bowl potential. He's done really, really well in this defensive scheme. So in 2019, we drafted him in the fifth round out of Arkansas, and almost immediately in his rookie year, he had big impact plays. We look at the game at C against Seattle at home. In overtime, he had the interception against Russell Wilson. Week 17, with the number one seed on the line, last play of the game, Dre Greenlaw is the one that makes the tackle on Jacob Hollister of the Seahawks, and that secures us the game, secures us the win, and the number one seed back in 2019. Now, 2020, he was very, very good, very solid as well. Last season, 2021, week one, interception, pick six, looking like he's about to have a breakout year last season. Then on that very interception, he gets hurt. He misses most of the year. But here's the thing. When he eventually came back and played somewhat consistently at the end of the year, I just love how he played. Aggressive, physical, fast, all the things that like Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans would ever want in a linebacker in this scheme. I just remember one of the first plays in the playoff game at Dallas, and Dre Greenlaw just shot into the backfield, tackle for a loss. Really, really good play from Greenlaw. So let's talk about his numbers as career numbers so far in the NFL. And let's keep in mind, he's only started 24 games in the regular season in his three years. So health is a big factor. If he can stay healthy, I think he can be a fantastic player. Overall stats, though, career-wise, two interceptions, one of them for a touchdown against the Lions, two sacks, 10 tackles for a loss, five quarterback hits. I think so far, look at those numbers. Those are really, really impressive numbers, especially when you take in the amount of games that he's actually played. One thing that really, really impresses me, too, is that in his career so far, he is a 4% missed tackle rate. That is incredibly low. He does not miss many tackles. Compare that to a guy like Fred Warner. He has a 9.5% career missed tackle rate, and we know just how good Fred Warner is. So I think Dre Greenlaw could really, really explode onto the scene in 2022. I think he has the potential, honestly, to be maybe as good as a Fred Warner, and I'm not not trying to just you know you know speak in hyperbole i think he could be fantastic the next player on this list is going to be wide receiver brandon ayuk now some people might be saying well brandon ayuk he's already kind of broke out well I think in a way he has, but I actually believe, similar to Dre Greenlaw, that Brandon Ayuk could actually become a top 10 wide receiver in this league. He has the skills, he has the natural born ability to do it all. Route running, catching, yards after the catch, just he does it all. He's fantastic and he has got really solid speed. So Ayuk, he's 24 years old, six foot, 200 pounds, good size right there. So the reason why I think he hasn't broken out yet is that if you look at his yards last season, he actually ranked 40th in the NFL in receiving yards, 57th in terms of receptions last season. So definitely not elite by any means. Although I think in 2022, with Trey Lance under center, we could definitely see a major improvement in those numbers. Some things that really give me confidence for Ayuk moving forward. He was 16th in yards per reception and 11th in yards per target. And let's not forget, that's in an offense with Jimmy Garoppolo primarily, where it's a lot of short passes. And I think we're still going to see that with Trey Lance, but also expect us to air the ball out a lot more, give those opportunities to, uh, to Brandon Ayuk to have those big time catches down the field. 
Now, why do I think he's going to have those big time catches and really increase his receptions is because we talked about it earlier. His route running is second to none. Look what he did to Trayvon Diggs in that game at Dallas in the playoffs. He made him look really bad. Trayvon Diggs, you know, you could argue just how good he really is, but honestly, he's a Pro Bowl guy, potentially all pro guy, perhaps last season. And Brandon Ayuk made him look silly. You know, if Jimmy Garoppolo was a little bit more accurate, Ayuk could have had a much bigger game in that playoff game. So another thing that actually really, really gives me hope for Brandon Ayuk moving forward is his drop percentage. He doesn't drop many balls. 5% drop rate. That's actually a better percentage rate than guys like CeeDee Lamb, DK Metcalf, Jamar Chase and Jerry Judy, all who drop balls at a higher rate than Brandon Ayuk. I think Ayuk really is poised to just explode onto the scene in 2022, especially if he can avoid the doghouse of Kyle Shanahan, if you will, for lack of a better term, especially early in the year. I really, really like Ayuk's game. The rest of the players on this list are actually going to be on the defensive side of the ball. I do think there's for sure potential in some of the players on the offensive side of the ball, but for this list, for guys who I think can really elevate their game and really, really break out in a big way, um, they're actually going to be guys on the defensive side. So coming up next in this list is Samson Ebukam, edge rusher. 27 years old, 6'3", 245, ideal size for that speed rusher in this defensive scheme. Now, Here's the thing. If you look at his numbers from 2021, the regular season, they're very, very pedestrian numbers. Let's be real. So four and a half sacks, five tackles for loss, 11 quarterback hits. That's in the 17 game regular season. So you're looking at that and you're thinking that's just, you know, average or decent for a rotational pass rusher. So why am I thinking he's going to break out? Well, I think ultimately he did warm up to the coaching from Chris Kasarik, the defensive line coach you look at his last eight games of the season, and that's including the three playoff games and the five last games of the regular season, that's five, he had five and a half sacks, 11 quarterback hits there. Now you take those numbers and if you put them over a regular season, you're talking 11 sacks, 20 quarterback hits, which is really, really impressive. And I think when you watch those playoff games in particular, Anytime we got a sack, who was right there beside it? Samson Ebukam was right there. He could have easily had a couple more sacks in the playoffs. So overall, I was really impressed with how he played down the stretch. And I think he's poised with another offseason with Kasarik, you know, around these guys in this scheme. I think he could really break out. And here's another thing, too, with Samson Ebukam. I'm going to knock on wood here is the fact that he's actually been healthy for every single game in his career. So it's not like he has any potential injury history or anything like that. If he plays 17 games this upcoming season, I think he should hit double-digit sack numbers. Next on the list is going to be cornerback Ambry Thomas. Now, I don't think you're going to see Ambry Thomas in the starting lineup that often. You're going to see probably Emmanuel Mosley and Charvarius Ward. So why is Ambry Thomas on this list? Well, here's the thing. The NFL, you play, you know, they play with three wide receiver sets on offense so often that you're basically in nickel coverage most of the time. Now, when I look at that, I think when we do move to that nickel coverage, then you'll see Ambry Thomas on the field a lot. So a couple of things here some of it's just kind of faith some of it's from what I saw last season so Ambry Thomas no doubt he struggled the first few games he played in but we have to remember a couple things in 2020 he did not play football in Michigan simply because of COVID-19 heading into that year if COVID wasn't really a thing he was being talked about as a potential first rounder he's got great size for this scheme six foot 190 maybe he's not that six three that you sometimes look for but overall a very willing tackler able to make plays really sticky coverage even when he was getting beat in those games when I looked at the game against Cincinnati, the game against Tennessee. He was right there to make the play, just didn't come up with it. And honestly, I think some of that's due to rust from not playing in live games and just, you know, also adjusting to the NFL game. Overall, you look at Embry Thomas, he's 22 years old, potential through the roof. And you get that experience from playing in the playoffs, playing in big time games, not only playing them, but playing well down the stretch. He played really, really well, got accustomed to the game. I think he could be in for a big, big time in 2022. As long as he can stay healthy, man, watch out for Embry Thomas. The last player on this list for my five breakout players for 2022 is going to be Javon Kinlaw. Is he finally healthy? He did get surgery in the middle of last season. 
sounds like from everything that we hear from interviews, reports that he's in the best shape that we've ever seen him in. He's 6'5", 319. He's only 24 years old. All the potential in the world. Gets the coaching from Chris Kacarek. Gets to play along guys like Eric Armstead, Nick Bosa every day in practice. We know that he has the abilities. Can he put it all together this year and really become the monster guy that we wanted when we drafted him? Uh, 14th overall out of South Carolina. Look. One of the things that really impressed me with Javon Kinlaw in his rookie year, of course, he made that ridiculously athletic big-time play against the Rams where he intercepted it, took it back for a touchdown, which was just awesome to see. Not only that, a stat that really sticks out to me, and this is big time for defensive tackles, 0% missed tackle rate in 2020 where he's played you know, the majority of his snaps in his pro career so far. That is not an easy thing to do. You think about all those situations where running backs run right up the middle and you know they maybe break a tackle defensive tackles to reach out to try and grab him he didn't miss any tackles and that's so important in this defense you can't give up the big plays so I think look with another off season of conditioning getting strength down working on technique really honing in his skills I really do think Javon Kinlaw could be the guy that we expected when we drafted him out of South Carolina it's a big year for him because really if he doesn't show it this year then all of a sudden you're three years in, you're, that word bust starts getting thrown around. But I believe if he stays healthy, you're going to see a big time year, potentially as good as, if not better, than what we've seen DJ Jones do with the 49ers when he was with us. That's going to do it for my list of five players who I think will break out for the 2022 season. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the players who I picked in terms of breaking out for this upcoming season. I also want to hear some players that you guys think will really just have a monster 2022 season and why you think that is the case. So um, I'm going to have a couple more videos coming out later this week, so stick around for that. And you know, guys, I'm going to say two things. The butt counts. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.